your host, Maurice Blair. Today we have a super guest, um, unusual guest, may I say, my daughter, Naya Blair. How you doing, Naya? Hey, babe. And um, you can address me as Mr. Blair. <laughs> okay. Um, and today we're, we're talking about successfully preparing for college, right? Yes, we are. And um, you are the assistant dean of students at Arkansas State, correct? Correct. And um, how, how is that coming along? How are you enjoying that? I'm enjoying it. I've been there since August. Um, as the assistant dean of students, I direct the multicultural center and work with our non-traditional students. So I've had a lot of great opportunities to reach out to our students, particularly our students of color, mm -hmm. um, and helping make sure that they do well in college, that they connect to campus and to the resources. And so I mean, I've really enjoyed it thus far. That's great. Well, I, I've seen you evolve and come up to the level you are from um, watching you enter um, UCA in college and going from there to Fayetteville to finish up with your master's and, and, and actually taking on the position at LSU, which, um, which was great. I enjoyed you know, coming down there in Louisiana, catching a few of the games and eating some of that good Louisiana food. But uh, it feels good to know that you're close in close proximity now at, at um, Jonesboro and um, in, in, at Arkansas State. And, but, you know, above all that, getting to the meat of our subject and the program, uh, helping high school students prepare for college. And it's a lot that even we, coming up as parents, me and your mother, we was unaware of that it really took us for a loop because we didn't know the, the preparation in, in getting students, preparing them for college. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what you're doing is, is a great job, it is super, and it's, it's really fulfilling and, and gratifying, I'm sure, but um, the being able to, to put students on the right track and more importantly, going in the right direction and getting ready for the college life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, being a first generation college student, the first one in the family to go to college, um, I think really helped where I'm at today to be able to understand the needs that students have, first generation college students have, and even that the parents have. And when students are going to college, it's not just the pressure, just not on that student, but it's on the whole family and making sure that the students have steps from high school okay. beyond. And particularly for our students of color, our minority students, we tend to find out about things at the last minute or we don't take the necessary steps uh, as early as we should. So then we're not as prepared going in and, and no one really talks you, to you or tells you about what you need to do to so even be a successful college student. Mm -hmm. Because we're excited when, you know, you graduated from high school and oh, my child is going to this college. But then there's the next step of making sure that she or he is um, doing well and being prepared to get into college and then while they're in college doing well so that they can graduate, because that, that's the goal. Um, but I believe that we have to do more on the front end to make sure that students are successful to get to college and then when they're in college so that they can be even more successful. Yeah, and I like the way you put that because it's one thing, uh, uh, you know, a lot of students say, well, I'm going to college, I'm going to college. But it's, it's not all in the going, it's finishing. Mm -hmm. and, and as you know, the statistics are alarming how our males, they are not finishing college at the same rate uh, females. Is that not right? That's true. Um, and I, there are several reasons for that. One being that males and generally tend to think that they can do it by themselves and okay. they don't ask for help or seeking the resources until it's too late. And then I believe that they don't necessarily have the support or they don't get the type of support that they need to be successful in school. People realize that when you're in college, it's different. You should come back to your hometown being different. And different doesn't mean bad. Right. But that means setting yourself apart to be successful and showing that you, know, you are in college, that you're doing the things that you need to do to prepare yourself for the next level. And I think a lot of males, particularly African males, they don't go in with that mindset, so it causes them to not be as successful as our particularly African American females. I understand, I, and I can understand. I can see that too as well. Um, and, and, and if anyone who's may be interested uh, our, with our, within our viewing audience, who may be interested in um, getting more information, how can they go about by contacting you? 
I can be reached uh, several ways, either uh, via email at nnblair, B-L-A-I-R, at a state, S-T-A-T-E, dot E-D-U, okay. or uh, my work phone, 870-680-4052. And I'm really interested in working with different organizations and groups, like I worked with LEAD a few years ago, in doing workshops to help students prepare for college and even parents help them prepare them for college because they need to be able to take their FAFSA, that financial aid, to do your tax forms early so that your students can apply for financial aid right. and apply in a timely manner so that you're able to get Pell Grants and scholarships and work study opportunities, even applying for housing, that needs to be early, and even scholarship opportunities, and most importantly, applying to school. A student shouldn't wait until their senior year to decide what college he or she wants to attend. Yeah, that's the, my, that was my next question right there. To see, you know, because most kids, they wait until the, even, I've known some to wait to the middle of their senior year and start, you know, shooting, okay, I want to go here, I want to go there, and, 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 and sadly, they don't have all the, the information and meet the requirements, mm -hmm. you know, and they kind of become discouraged. Become discouraged, or you don't get enough aid to pay for school, or you don't get in the, the housing because you filled out everything too late. A student should really start thinking about what college he or she wants to go to in 10th grade. And by the 11th grade, should have a list, I always say, at least three to five colleges that you want to attend. And you should always apply to three because you always want to have a backup plan in case the colleges you really want to go to work. I don't know if you remember when I really wanted to go to UT Martin. Right, I remember that. And I also applied to UCA. And one of the scholarships that I was looking to get to to go to UT Martin fell through. And because it was going to cost a lot of money for me to go out of state, and I was like, I mean, well, I don't want to do that. Right. Because um, we, that just it costs too much to go out of state. So then I had that backup plan to apply for UCA, and I, I had applied and I got accepted and was still able to complete my paperwork, get into housing, sure and get was, everything right. on time. Right. So a lot of times students want to go to school out of state, which is fine, but they should always have two in state schools that they're looking at or schools that waive their out of state fee because college is experience. I mean, it's expensive. But it's also about the experience. So don't right. get accepted to the one school you want to go to. College is what you make, and that's what I tell students. So if it's locally that you're going to school or if it's far away, it's about what you make it and utilizing the opportunities and the resources that the school has. Yeah, and I, I, I kind of caught something you were saying uh, a moment ago, and, and I tell students that you do not go to college tell students to get that out of your head. Colleges accept you, mm -hmm. and that's predicated on from your transcripts, ACT, GPA, all of that factors in there. And, and most kids, they don't really understand the ramifications of, you know, putting themselves in a position and saying, I want to go to this school, I want to go to that school. But you have to be accepted. Mm -hmm. And it begins, actually, in the ninth grade mm -hmm. with, um, with your transcripts. Uh, and, um, and, and, and and bills each year, mm -hmm. and as well as uh, and I'm you know I was really uh, taken away by you know, not having done even certain well uh, being a part of community service. That's a, that's very important mm -hmm. as well. Is that right? Yes, because students uh, colleges look at the whole package. So grades just yes, as important. Even when students have the opportunities to take that AP course or that pre AP course, they should because that's a harder level of study. And so when you uh, get to college, you will know how to study more and, and better and manage your time better by taking those difficult courses, but being involved. Colleges want well-rounded students, so students that are involved in the community, that are involved in school. We don't want students who just go to class and, and come home. And that's the same way when you get to college. You right. want to be well-rounded. There are a lot of the experiences and opportunities for students to take advantage of because now more and more people are getting your bachelor's degree. So you have to have things to set you apart. So being involved in doing internships and going to that next level to get your master's degree or even doctorate degree, that's what's going to set you apart in place. So if you do that while you're in junior high and high school, you're more apt to do that when you get to college of being involved and being that well-rounded student. Right. Well, even I've, I've, I've come to terms and, and I would hear, I have my ear to the ground and listen, listening to high school students, uh, you know, I had several of them, they were under, under the assumption that you go to school and you go to when you attend college 
you attend college just like you attend high school you, from eight to three and yeah. and you know it really blew several students away to learn that that wasn't the case mm -hmm. because in college you have the opportunity to decide your schedule right. so you, I might want to have morning classes or I might want to have classes just on Tuesday right. and Thursdays right. and college you have a lot of free time and flexibility but then being able to know what to do with that so that's another part of being successful in college how do you utilize your time no one, your parents are not there to tell you to study. Right. So don't get caught up with going to the parties or just hanging out because at the end of the semester, it's great. So you yeah. can get on probation. And, and it's unfortunate, too, that while we have a decrease in particular African Americans, uh, males attending college, we also have a large amount of them not being able to come back to college after their first year or their first semester because their grades are so poor. I see. And so, again, that being disciplined, and that's important for the parent to be able to ask the student, you know, how does it come along? Are you going to your classes? Tell me what you're learning in the class mm -hmm. to be engaged. As a parent, you can't find out what your student's grades are because of our FERPA laws, but I feel like that parents that are more engaged with students, asking them what they're doing in the classroom, how is their college experience, also helps students be more successful because they know that they're being held accountable and your parent wants to know what's going on and it's just not at the end of the semester. And we just celebrate the fact that our child is in college, but how is your child doing in college? And right. a lot of parents get shocked that, oh, my child didn't do nothing but go to parties or just hang out because his or her grades do not reflect that of a, a successful student. So in other words, you're saying developing good study habits all of those things and being and connecting yourself with a great study group mm -hmm. who who um, consistent that all those are very very important tools that help that will help you go to the next level while you're attending college yes I mean you know when I was in junior high in high school I wasn't someone who naturally just got things I really had to study whereas Erica right. younger sister just naturally got things but it really helped me to when I was in college because I already knew how to study. Mm -hmm. And I seen so many students now, and even when I was in college, who it came natural to them in high school. So college is on the next level. Your, your classes might be not as hard um, as you would think, but as you progress in your major, they're gonna get more difficult and more difficult. And I've seen students who've had all A's in high school come to college and do very poor because they didn't know how to study because they didn't have to study. I understand. And so and that's another important thing of knowing how to study and all colleges have opportunities where you can connect with someone for tutoring or going to see your advisor, connecting with your peers so that you can be successful in the classroom. Great, great. I enjoyed the program like I, we was, you were speaking of earlier um, last year uh, when you came and you actually did a, a segment for LEAD, through LEAD, um, that really uh, invited students out and, 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 and you had a panel of people as well and it really was an eye-opener for me um, that really really in in it really it really like I said was an eye-opener for me but I was really shocked to watch the students engage in conversation in questioning and answering because they were just as inquisitive yeah and I, I think that Again, people get excited about going to college. They want to go to college, but you don't know the details of what it takes to really be successful in college. And the resources and the people that are at college campuses that are there to help you and assist you, people like myself. And so I think the more and more students get exposure to what it takes to be successful in college early on, mm -hmm. even, I mean, we had ninth graders at their workshop and 10th graders, that prepares them more when they get to college because if you think about it, most families don't talk about what you need to do to be successful in college. Right. They just talk about you getting to college, but that's when the conversation ends. So once you got accepted and you find out how much money it takes or how much money you're gonna receive to attend college, that conversation ends. And so you, it's really important for families to either come to workshops like I did for LEAD or talk to their students about what it's gonna take for them to be successful and enjoy college experience. Colleges was one of the most 
one of the most beneficial and fun times that I think a person can have and it has a lot of great opportunities but you have to be smart about it uh, attending and, and knowing what key things that you need to do to be successful and like you said that starts from the ninth grade from that transcript on until you walk across the stage stage as a graduate to whatever university you attend absolutely um, l tell us what a what do you see yourself maybe five, six, seven, eight years from now, what do you see yourself doing in this field, in the, in the field you're in, or uh, what direction are you going to try to go in? Well, recently I, I've come to discover, um, while working at ASU, I work a lot with our Diversity Initiatives Office and I, at LSU in the African American Culture Center, and I feel like I really have a passion not only just to help all students, but particularly minority students. So within the next five to seven years, I can see myself working to become a chief diversity officer on a campus. So not only working with students to make sure that college campuses are a, a safe and inclusive environment for them, but also working with faculty and staff because diversity is something that we all experience and something that we're all a part of. True. But I, I continue to see myself at a college campus and um, hopefully working in, in a diversity initiatives or diversity field. Great. Um, this, the college life or college experience you've had from UCA to Fayetteville, how has that helped you in what you're doing today? How has that been beneficial to you, um, whether it's interacting with students, whether it's interactive, whether it's being a part of various programs on campus, how has that helped you as a whole? It's, it's helped me a lot. It's helped me to realize um, one and, and understand that no matter what college you go to, students still have the same issues or the same concerns or the same pressures and really being able to understand and to relate to the students mm -hmm. and particularly being a first generation college student and having to figure out things myself and seeing where students can uh, fall in a trap and not be successful. So me being for me to be able to really reach out to students and, and communicate with students and tell them about experiences that I had that helped me become more right. successful and things that I wish I would have done, such as study abroad and put myself out there. But also, in this role, I've had the opportunity from my college experiences to really understand and know the, the importance and the power of networking, right. communicating with people. because. As you've told me many times that, you know, it's not always what you know, it's who you know. That's true. And um, who you know will get you into the doors, but you also have to know information. You have to be, right. you have you have to be, to be fit prepared. material. You mm -hmm. have to be qualified. Mm -hmm. You just can't know a person and then that's the end of it and they mm -hmm. close the book. But if you're not fit material and ready to take on the task and able to take on the mm -hmm. task at hand, well, it's, it still does you no good. And so, and there, but there are some people on the opposite, they're fit, but they don't know how to communicate with others. They can't walk in a room and talk to people and open right. their mouth and, and sell themselves. And right. so you have to be able to do that. And, and you're right, you have to be prepared. Um, I, when I was interviewing at the school at Baylor, I met the, the dean of students on a plane. You know, you never know who you're going to meet and when That's you're going to meet a person and how that can help you in the future. That's true. And actually, our associate officer, Dr. Lonnie Williams at Arkansas State University, I met him when I was a graduate student, uh, actually when I was an undergrad at UCA going to Fayetteville for a conference. And he still remembered me and the type of work that I did as a student and kept in contact with me right. to see how I progressed even as a professional. professional. And, and now I'm working at ASU as assistant dean of students. Great. And what are those two pieces of information if, if any, any individual would like to get in contact with you? If anyone would like to get in contact with me to talk about college or do workshops to prepare students for college, I can be reached via email at nnblair, B-L-A-I-R, at astate.edu, A-S-T-A-T-E dot E-D-U, or at 870-680-4052. Great, great. Well, like I say, I'm proud of you. Always have been, and uh, your tenacity, the you have your willingness to work hard, and and you know, when the tough get going, you hang in there. And and with those habits, you you go a long way in life, and I know that. But the key thing is never 
being satisfied with just where you are, always striving for continuous improvement. I think that's something we, as humans, we get complacent in life and we fizzle out and we don't set up short and long-term goals for ourselves. And that's and we fizzle out where, you know, really the, the sky's the limit. We are we are type of people who, you know, as, as human beings that, you know, Information is, is infinite, you know, mm -hmm. we, it's, just, it, we, it's, it's always ongoing, and that's how we should be. Mm -hmm. And like I said, keep up the good work, um, you, know, you know, keep God first, believe in what you're doing, and, um, and, and you're constantly and continue blessed. Um, if, what advice would you give to any young man or any young lady who, who may you know, who who undecided whether they want to, you know, go to school or just maybe, you know, not go to college or, or just maybe at odds and not really sure. What, what, what how, would you, how would you try to convince them or sell them on that? Well, I do believe that college is not for everyone. Right. I feel like there are other things that I people agree. are very good at to do. But I feel like when students are maybe undecided if they want to go to college or what type of college they should go to, two-year community college those are always a great start because you'll do your basics there I like and you that. can understand to see if I'm ready to go to a four-year institution particularly if someone if your grades are not where they where you want them to be or your ACT or SAT scores are not I would suggest going to a community college because a lot of times if you get to a university a four-year university you're you're put in programs uh, where you're admitted on a conditional basis and so you have to take all of these classes that um, don't count for college credit but just trying to help you um, it, it's helping you to because you didn't make the right ACT score you have to take this remedial class is what uh -huh, they're called right. and I don't suggest any student going to a four-year college taking a remedial class unless you only have to take one I would suggest taking that at a community college that saves money and that saves time and you're able to work with professors and in an environment that may not be as intimidating right. or, or as, yeah, that's the word, as intimidating as what it would be at a four-year institution. I understand. But community colleges are a great option. And then there are tests that career services or counselors should be able to give students to really see like what you're passionate about. You always said do what you're about and then the money will come and I truly believe that right. you should do things that you really enjoy and worry about the money later because life is about enjoying, it's about fulfilling your purpose and really making a difference. Absolutely. And sometimes students get pressured to go into pre-med or biology because their parent wants them to be a doctor and they really don't want to be a doctor Absolutely. or they really don't want to be a dentist and then they don't do well and right. they come to college and they're trying to struggle with how they're going to tell their parent that they don't want to do this and that they're not doing well in that class. And so I, I would suggest for parents to be supportive of whatever direction that your child wants to do, but you need to do something with your life. And everyone's here to put on arts to make a difference. Well, and you're exactly right. You know, you know, do what, you know, uh, in other words, make your vocation become your vacation. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and you know, if you enjoy what you do, you know you're gonna make a living. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you if you got anything in you, you can live in. If you have any fire, gumption, or tenacity, that's it. But you, it, it's nothing like getting up in the morning, going to work or a job that you do not like. Mm -hmm. That's the most punishment I think you can inflict on yourself mm -hmm. as a human being. And, um, you know, I always tell students, you know, always have a plan A, but have a plan B. Mm -hmm. And sometimes your plan B becomes your plan A. Mm -hmm. And um, I've had several come back a couple of years after they've left, um, two, three, four years after they've left high school and said, Mr. Blair, you were exactly right. You know, having that plan B, is what, that was my safety net. That's mm -hmm. really what helped me and helped me sustain myself mm -hmm. and, and to where I am today. Mm -hmm. So. And that's very important and, and exactly what you're saying there, you know, being able to do these things um, will allow you not only happiness and joy inside, but where you will be effective in what you're doing. It's one thing to do it, but you want to be effective, very effective in what you're doing. Because you never know who, who's watching you. I received an email last week from a student who said, <coughs> Ms. Blair, I really admire what you're doing, how you really came in and made a difference. And I just want to let you know that 
it's really good to see African American women on this campus, such as yourself, doing great things. Right. And you never know who's watching you and what difference you're making in the lives of others. You're right. So. <clears throat> you're right. You're absolutely right. But well, keep up the good work and. And, um, you know, just in tell the viewing audience some more things that, that will be very helpful to them um, in reference to contacting you, in reference to being a part of um, the college life. Mm -hmm. The main thing is, you know, I feel like one of my purposes here on earth is to help particularly minority students succeed in college. And I'm willing to do that. I feel like that because there were a very, uh, <coughs> very um, large amount of people who <coughs> helped me in my success as a college student and just in my career. And I want to be able to share that with others and really help students be successful while they're in college to graduate and, and graduate and have a well-rounded experience because college is more than getting a degree. That's degree true. is first, but you should come away with more than just a degree. Absolutely. Not only with friends, but a whole new experience that will hopefully change your life. I tell students, if you enter college, when you enter college, you should not graduate being the same person. You should have grown so much. You should have experienced and put yourself in situations that you normally wouldn't experience positive, such as studying abroad, interning, meeting people from different cultures, and really immersing yourself into the complete college experience. Absolutely. Um, another thing I've enjoyed is that the um, opportunity college grants you in reference to being able to to network like you said earlier without that experience sometimes that handicaps us mm -hmm. yes even for scholarship opportunities mm -hmm. Even when you're in college, after you've been admitted, there are still scholarship opportunities for upperclassmen. So it's important to not only get to know your professors when you're trying to go to grad school, when you're trying right, to do right. that internship. Don't go and sit in the back of your classroom. Go and sit in the front. Introduce yourself to your professor to let him or her know who you are and that you're serious about being right. here. Because, of course, depending on how large the inst institution that you attend, you can become just another number. but you want to set yourself apart, you want to be different. And even with people who's, who work at the university, such as myself, assistant deans, the deans of students, directors, introducing yourself, taking advantage of the opportunities that are on campus right. so that when, when I have scholarship opportunities, I'm sending it out to a large amount of people, but making sure that the students really have a connection with or who come and visit and talk to me, making sure that they've done these different things. Have you applied for the scholarship? Have you applied for this internship? Or introducing them to people to get jobs on campus. So it's important to network. You, you, you can never, uh, you're never too old to network, and you're never too young to network. And, and you're never too old to go to college. You're no, in college, too. That's true. That's true. That's I work true. with non-traditional students, and so we have a lot of students who come to college that their children have graduated from college and now they want right, to come back right, and that's absolutely. a great thing and anybody can can go to college and, and take advantage of this and I feel like again more and more students are doing that and colleges have the resources to help older or, or students who have uh, more than one child be successful and go to college everyone is afforded the opportunity to have an education and to be successful and I think it's very important for those who may be thinking about it or on the, should they go back to college or I'm too old, you're never too old, and, and there are people that are doing it every day and Absolutely. graduating every day. You got the truth, that's exactly right. Well, believe it or not, our time is winding down, wow. it's went quick, and yep. you've done good. Thanks, well, you've done good. Proud of you, and I'm glad to be on the show.